I literally showed up and he said, I've got called into work. I have 45 minutes, which means you have 30 minutes. Can we get this done in 30 or do we need to reschedule? What do you think I said? We can get it done in 30. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I'm your host, Austin lopes and I'm here with Chris Ball, Zach McElwain, and Roger Short. The LIA podcast takes you into the conversations of top producing life insurance agents so that you can level up your business. For episode notes and resources, visit liapodcast.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad. Also, make sure you subscribe to our text notifications for episode releases and agent resources. All you have to do is send the letters LIA to the number 82149. That's 82149 in a message with the letters L-I-A. Thanks for joining us. Today's episode is our monthly special where we discuss a topic that you, our listeners, have submitted. The question for today comes from Valerie, a new agent in California. Let's listen in. Hi, guys. My name is Valerie, and I'm a new agent. I'm trying to figure out how to navigate going from small talk to the presentation itself. And roughly, how long should my presentation be? I think uh, that's a great question by Valerie. I think everybody has uh, dealt with this uh, this idea of transitions or how do you start, how do you stop. And, you know, everybody's kind of getting back to it and it feels weird. It was, uh, you know, we were in kind of Mad Max mode for a little <laughs> that's bit. So true. Hopefully we're getting out of it. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, Chris, I you're get, the guy on the front with the flaming guitar, that's right? right? Oh, and that's like for sure. Chris. That'd probably be more a, flame, a flaming banjo or a ukulele. Yeah, a I can see ukulele. that. With you have better off. hair than him, though. Well, I did get a haircut today. <laughs> that was I, exciting. The I'm first haircut in how many weeks? Oh my gosh, Roger! It's been it's been I think two and a half months, and <laughs> there was a pile of hair that looked like a Yorkie poo. Oh my it was God. disgusting. You guys are so movie buffs, very, right? What was the mm-hmm. main character? Like the villain dude's name? That's a great and, question. And Mad Max? Mm-hmm. I don't know. But uh, yeah. yeah, so hopefully we're getting out of that mode and we're going to we're going to go see people, but people, I'll tell you man, people have been receptive. Uh visiting at their homes, you know, getting fist bumps and you know, I'm awkwardly, you know, they're ready to shake hands. I'm like, "Whoa, I don't know if we're supposed to be doing that," <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, there's these moments in the sit where there's uh, a beginning a middle and an end, and throughout that whole time, there are these little transitions, and I think um, that's a great question. That was by quite Valerie. the transition, buddy. Did you like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was smooth. Thank you. Went from uh, Yorkie poo to Mad Max <laughs> to there's a middle and there's an end. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's like a good story. It's like a, a good a story. Good story. And before we get started on our story, hmm. see, there's Dude, another one. We are dropping transition bombs here. <laughs> Better than all the other episodes, which they don't hear because I'm re-recording and, and you know dubbing. <laughs> You're and like editing <laughs> out all of the good transitions. It's like hibachi, dude. You're oh, like, tick, 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 yeah, tick. yeah, and you're making little <laughs> volcanoes with our words. I have no idea what that means, but uh, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, in our organization, we do have um, some different terminology. So for us, presentation is not uh, the whole uh, sit, uh, but can you all define the difference between sit and presentation? Uh, a sit is literally from the time you walk into their home and begin your process with them till you leave. The presentation happens in the middle where you're actually now going over your material. However, all of the stuff before the presentation is probably more important than the presentation, and that is a part of the sit. So when we use the word sit, it's it's not the same as presentation. So you can hear, even you know, in our last episode, we talked about tracking numbers, how many sits mm-hmm. or how many presentations. Like there's a difference. So uh, we want to want to make sure we, we cover that. And by the way, the character's name, the villain, Immorton Joe. M- Morton I, Joe? Immorton Joe. Immorton Joe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the guy, the big guy with the mask. He had oh, yeah. COPD it sounds sure. like yes, he was going to qualify for <laughs> Portland was that, was, that a mobile, mm-hmm. was that a mobile nebulizer he had with him? <laughs> I think him? so. It was a massive, massive <laughs> machine to, it was like the extreme end of COPD right before death. Yeah, you better but, get him signed up with Liberty. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, But who came first, Bane or him? Like, 
Bane. Right. Good question. Depends. When was yeah. the movie set? Mm-hmm. Good yeah. stuff, guys. Yeah. So Bane <laughs> had to have come. I don't know. It's a, yeah. We're going to have to do some well, research. Well, post apocalyptic And I know that Bane would have been first. Yes. The analogy is about the apparatus Bane is wearing to breathe versus the one in Morton Joe. Either way, breathe. both those guys are getting liberty. Okay. I, I just know but Batman. But then Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> well, We're I, done. We're done. Yeah. Iron Man had congestive heart oh, failure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that yeah. little device was just a big Carvetal almond pill. <laughs> that's what it, it was. was. <laughs> Our transitions and tie down, it got way <laughs> off. We, we just took that into comp- we ch- we chase this rabbit down a couple of holes there. Now Roger, you can actually have a sit and not do a presentation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's because, possible. Because you can get into a home, you can start uh, building trust with the client, sitting down with the client, and for some reason or another, you find out it's one legged and you have to reschedule. Or and that's pirates. The Caribbean. <laughs> See, that's other language that we use. We don't even think about it. One just, legged. Yeah, and these now somebody's taking notes saying, "Well, do not sit with people who have prosthetics." <laughs> <laughs> One legged. What does that mean? Uh, that means that if you're going to sit with a couple, a husband or a wife, um, or their significant others, or there's two decision makers in the home, but only one of them is present at the time, um, so you don't want to do a presentation. Um, because once you get to the end of it, you'll they'll say, "Oh, well, I, I don't make any decisions today. Can I have your business card? I'm going to talk to my spouse or significant other." Um, but the problem is, when they go talk to that person, the only thing they're saying is, "Honey, um, some insurance guy come talk to me today, so I can give us ten thousand for eighty six bucks." And there's no value. There's nothing. No, there. Nothing. There's nothing. And that's a one legged. That is one legged. And then there's multiple situations um, that you don't want to do a presentation. But you still um, you had a, a partial sit, but it wasn't a full sit. Mm-hmm. Roger, you've done uh, sales for almost your entire. I mean, you came out selling something. Like, yeah, something. Selling right? something. You're selling extra diapers laying around the house when you were like a toddler. Well, he no. really develops the need. So. <laughs> he does. <laughs> so, in your sales experience, I'm sure there was there was a focus on selling uh, presentations. Like how many presentations did you give? Mm-hmm. And the tricky part about that in this business is if you're measuring presentations versus sits, you're devaluing the stuff that happens before. Well, you're devaluing probably the biggest influencing right. factor, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. because during the sit is where your personality comes out. It's mm-hmm. where you are able to connect with people. You're able to discover, right? Selling is not telling. Remember that. There's a 1999. Selling is not telling. The best salespeople are the best listeners. And so presentation is about telling, right? Presentation is about educating. Presentation is about you talking. Um, but that doesn't, that doesn't sell your product, right? You have to, first of all, connect, find out the need, earn trust, under, un, you know, uncover their want, and then you can actually get into the presentation. Some of those things are addressed in presentation, but if you don't have the other stuff first. So to address the question from Valerie, Valerie, I would say, uh, first of all, distinguish between what a sit is and what a presentation is. You'll be able to see the nuance and the differences in some of these segments because they speak to the bigger picture of the five real reasons why people don't buy. We're going back to that again. Uh, but that's the underlying foundation of everything, and that's encompassed in a sit, not mm-hmm. just presentation. I can break this down for some new agents. Break it down, Zach. This is this is a three course meal. All okay. right, it's a meal. You're going to dinner, right? That's your sit. So so we have we have our beginning meal, our, our trust building, our our appetizer, our salad, our rolls, whatever, all that at the beginning. Then we have the main course, which is the presentation. But you can't forget about the cool down, or most of us like to call it dessert. Which is your favorite <laughs> part of favorite. every meal, Zach. I, it, yeah. it, that ties it down. That solidifies the meal. <laughs> that lets you know this was a this was a good sit sit down dinner. You know, this this you know, I'm good. I'm I'm satisfied. Yeah, it's like the chocolate mints you get at Olive Garden, right? The uh, Andy's mints. Uh, it just seals seals a whole meal together. But um, let's back up. Let's back up to the unlimited breadsticks and salad, uh, the appetizer part. Uh, what is the appetizer of the sit? What does that look like? What's the timing of it? Uh, that's going to be our trust building process. So that's everything from getting in the door um, and you're literally walking in the in the home. 
Uh, now at the beginning of that, um, I'm actually not sitting down technically, mm -hmm. but that's where the sit begins. Um, and I'm going to start building trust, looking at pictures, walking around the home, um, you know, because they're going to have photos. They're going to they're going to show everything they're interested or they care about in their life are going to be in that living room. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going directly to those to start building that trust. Now, as I'm moving through that, I'm transitioning to a sitting location while I'm still building that trust and going through core, which is children, occupation, recreation, and emotion. How long are you spending on core? Now, that can vary, okay? Um, long enough. And what okay. I mean, you want to, I always say, connect or uh, build trust with a purpose. And um, I always say you have to do it until it's easy. Because you have to read your client. They're all going to have some sort of wall or barrier that's naturally up um, because they don't really know you. Um, but you want to let them know you are a human and you want to connect with them, that you're just like them, you're just a person, you have a family, all of that. And you will be able to tell when it's easy. When the conversation is flowing, you're not worried about appointments or rushing or time or what this is about. And it's just natural at that point. So if it's a couple and they're very talkative, that could be pretty easy, and you might actually want to um, hone in on not letting the conversation get away from you and start talking about everything they did when they were 10 years old because mm -hmm. that can be uh, too long. Like mm -hmm. you, can, you can really get some talkers. On the other side of that, you may have a couple that uh, are a little quiet or more reserved or one of them is more dominant than the other, and you have to kind of bring a little bit more energy and ask more questions and probe until it all becomes easy. Mm -hmm. um, either way, the length of time for that can literally be 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes uh, over 30 minutes, Good. depending on your clients. I love that. I love that measure. Um, I, you know, as, as Zach says, as long as it takes to connect, um, I am a, I'm a natural connector with people and I would enter the friend zone because um I've been there <laughs> but I don't think that's what this episode is about <laughs> right uh, you know it kind of reminded me of that what was it that Seinfeld episode where he talked about you know uh leaving them wanting more you know and uh, George Costanza I don't know if you remember that episode where he uh, he felt like he had the room or he'd tell a funny joke or He'd, he'd get a one-liner in, and they'd say, that's it, and he'd leave. He'd walk out. Everybody was all happy. And uh, I think there's something to that where you aren't over-connecting in a way, where people feel comfortable enough to say no to you or feel comfortable enough to just buy from you because they like you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, dude, that, that, that's a very profound thought that it's not so much set the timer to connect as it is just to just to get warm enough, just to get warm enough to know that, uh, we're all people. We all dig each other. It's a cool thing. Chris, I want to say this. like What some people consider small talk is like the stuff you have to do before you present. Yeah. And so I want to distinguish like if you're, if you're understanding it as small talk because it's the niceties that you're supposed to do to be polite before you present, like that, that's a big miss. Like You're swinging mm -hmm. hard and Correct. you're missing hard because that upfront information and content and time spent – is not small talk without a purpose. We say core, right, is connecting with a purpose. Zach alluded to it earlier. So you have to use that time to build into your presentation. It is vital. It is not small talk. Yes, it appears to be niceties that you're sharing, but it is with a purpose going in a specific direction to enable the presentation to be set properly before you get there. You can't invite people in offer them dessert first and tell them the salad's over there in the fridge, right? It's just, it's all awkward, right? Mm -hmm. Right? You give them a drink first. Mm -hmm. Then you bring out the finger foods, mm -hmm. then the salads, then the main course. And then everyone's happy, and then you give them a little chocolate for dessert. Dinner's at Roger's house. I'm like, this. Yeah, so, <laughs> like, it's, it's a process. So, just even the term, like, how do I transition from the Correct. small talk to the presentations? Like, how do I get past this quickly to, so I can get to the important stuff? Well, the important stuff is this, what would be referred to as small talk. Mm -hmm. to, to us, the presentation is now just the next segment of that or the next step in the process. I think this would be helpful uh, for, for Valerie because she talks specifically about transitioning in and out of small talk. Mm -hmm. And I think for her, her, and I'm speaking, I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking for her, she's talking about you know what she would consider core and then getting to the, <laughs> I know this, getting to the, 
the presentation, you know, like I remember those first few sits where I was connecting, we were doing great. And then, um, you went into presentation mode. <laughs> yes. I like somebody switched to flip and or flipped a switch and switched to flip, <laughs> switched to flip. It's even worse. <laughs> How um, every time, I mean, just messing up these like, oh, it's like I'm from Bolivia Got or it. something. Like, He's from Michigan. Leave him alone. <laughs> Why'd you throw Bolivia? I don't, know. I don't know. Come on, man. You people in Bolivia. Bolivia. Come on. <laughs> Burn dust. Eat my rubber. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's this moment where there's this, this pause and I, I would say something like, uh, and now I have something to show you. <laughs> oh, my oh boy. Gosh. <laughs> and, and then I would pull out my presentation. A lot of now things can go bad right after you car. say that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, and I, I really appreciated Zach's, Zach's approach and uh, how he would uh, move from, you know, small talk or core and into the, the beginning of that conversation. You know, we actually have a, a really good podcast. I don't exactly know the number, Austin. But, Austin does, dude. He's like Rain Man. Yeah, I'm sure he does. About uh, the trust building and core process, right? And and what Roger just alluded to about connecting in the home, because that is going to make the transitions so much easier and smoother. Um, so you can see this whole presentation, the whole philosophy behind the final expense product is is to make it all works together. It's it's interlocking. Um, so you can find a lot of that in, in that previous episode. But when we dive into the transition, the real question is: How do we go from talking about NASCAR and four wheelers and fishing to death? <laughs> yeah. How, how do we bridge that gap and start talking about that? So the way we transition in that is a process. We got to back up a little bit. We got to talk about emotion. So how are we going to get into death? Death is an emotion. Death is something that brings our heart out. We, we, we understand. We can all, right now listening to this, think about somebody that has passed away that we care about, um, and it's going to make us feel some type of way. So whenever we want to talk about emotion, we, we have to get their heart involved in this sit. And we can't do that by talking about uh, what are you watching on TV or, or protests or politics? You never want to talk about that in the home. Um, we need to be able to transition into that emotion. So we can talk about positive emotions, positive emotions. So what could those be? If you're sitting with a couple, you know, ask them questions about um, when they got engaged or how long they've been married. And use them. You can use uh, emotional tie downs and getting, agreeing them to say, yes, I can tell you all really still love each other, don't you? Using these things and in, in remembering that day, you know, Mr. Jones, do you remember what it was like when, when, when Mrs. Jones turned that corner and walked up that aisle and that was the first time you laid eyes on her? There's going to be emotion attached to that memory. His heart's going to feel something, maybe goosebumps or whatever, right? Or talking about her, what, Miss Jones, what was it like to be the most beautiful girl on that day and to know everybody at that wedding was there to look at you? She's going to have an emotion in a, attached to that memory, um, you can talk about their kids or their grandkids graduating um, or, or reaching a milestone, being able to take the training wheels off the bike, anything that, that is going to get your client emotional. And then you're able to transition into more negative emotions or painful emotions. Like, now, have you ever lost anybody close to you? Even that transition, Zach, is, you know, you don't just go from have you like how beautiful did you feel on that day to has anyone died like it's were your parents well, you, able to be there that day are they still alive right right and like, yes the, or no. the, the, the whole thing with core we can spend hours on core because there's a huge philosophy in that um, but it's it's about those questions and that emotion and yes lower your tone lean in sitting close to them when you're talking about those things it allows you to connect a little bit better and then you're moving in and talking about the family that was attending the wedding or when's the last time you've seen them or when did they pass away or is that what made you start thinking about uh, uh, dying or, or pa- you know, passing away yourself or is, you know, and you move into that, all that emotion and my transition line from going from that conversation because now we've walked in and started talking about children, occupation, recreation, and now emotion. My transition to the presentation is, is that what made you start thinking about protecting your family because you love them so much you would never want them to be left with a burden, right? And they say, yes. Mm. And I say, I got some information I'd like to go over with you to show you how we might be able to help with that. 
And as I'm saying that, not then, so there's no pause, as I'm saying that entire line, I'm pulling that presentation out and sitting it there. So the moment I'm done talking about it, I'm already on page one and telling them who we are. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's a smooth, it's not a stop, silence, let me get right. my bag, rustle around, pull it out. And it's always coming. The best transition that I teach everybody is to build that emotion, to ask those questions, to figure out how important it is to them, figure out how much they love their family, and then follow it up with, after you hear their words, is that what made you want to, make, want to take care of your family and make sure they're never left with a burden? Is that, after they say it. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good transition. Um, so at that point, does the timer start for the presentation? So great question. And again, it's easy to want to put a timer on it because uh, I think it's a question of efficiency. And uh, also, I think there's some question of uh, buyer fatigue or wearing out the people you're sitting with. Um, so there, there are checkpoints for us uh, as far as you're going to hear this answer repeatedly throughout this as, as long as it takes for the yeah, client. You're driving the, the C's and the disc crazy right now. <laughs> and we'll <laughs> talk about that in a few weeks, actually. Yes. We're really excited yeah. for um, But they're like, I just need a number. <laughs> right. I know. It, and I wish there was. I wish there was, but it doesn't work that way because we're dealing with people. So as long as it takes to connect, and then once we get into the presentation, as long as it takes for the client to be educated, and I'm sure Zach has some some dimes to drop on us. Mm. No, it's just, I I feel like the presentation is more of a tighter window. It's, it's more of a set number more than core core can be literally, you know, like I said, 15 to 40 minutes Mm -hmm. really. Um, so I feel like a presentation is more dialed in, but it also depends on the trust and the connection you build, because we know when we build trust and connection with them, what's in there is credibility. Mm-hmm. So you, you start to understand that credibility. And if you have that and, and they're cool and they like you, then you're going to be able to move through the presentation. You're going to be able to educate them and their mental, their mental game is going to be locked into what you're saying and you're going to be able to help them understand and teach them. Where if you don't have as much trust, then the client is going to be more reluctant or be trying to challenge you or saying, oh, no, I know about this, I know about that. And and you can have a lot more objections and overcoming. Um, because when we are doing a presentation, and I think we'll get into this, um, but personally, I don't want to move to the next page until I know the client is with me. If they're not with me or they're giving me objections or I'm having issues, that presentation is going to take longer. But we're mm. still going to get to the end, same end result. You yeah. also have to remember, like we're working with a age demographic, typically that is they just process a little slower, and the, the way they think through things, and so you can't rush through, you can't talk fast through your presentation. And it's important to have good visuals, also. Uh, you know, we use a, a presentation piece that's made up of about seven pages with content, visuals, images. You know, uh, that keeps our agents kind of in that linear direction so that we can cover the most important pieces, do the education part. But interestingly, Zach, you know, while it is, I agree with Zach that it is a more defined time and it may only take about 10 to 15 minutes to actually do the entire presentation, probably closer to 10 if you, if you're moving through it without a lot of, a lot of dialogue. But sometimes during your trust building phase prior to getting into the presentation, like you, you don't really uncover a lot sometimes. Like you right. can get into the niceties and you're on the surface level. But sometimes when you're into the presentation and we go over maybe the four main reasons why people request information, like on a final expense plan, or you talk about why people really need uh, a good mortgage protection plan and we get into t- uh, highlighting some of those things, it opens up something for clients. And I know you guys have been in situations where we'll hit on one of those and then they'll go, I know my sister just passed away. Mm-hmm. She didn't have any coverage, and we are still paying for a funeral. Or my brother-in-law was just killed in a car accident, and his wife now has three kids to raise on their own. They just moved into their new home. Now she's going to have to sell the house, and like it becomes very real. Like you touch on something that's very real, Austin, and all of a sudden, like for you just to keep moving through your presentation is inappropriate. Yeah, right. You need to pause there and then dialogue about that and talk about the importance of it. 
how their family took care of that, the impact that it's making, and then address, you know, is that one of the main concerns that, that was on your mind when, well, yeah, because I don't ever want that to happen to my family. But you can really dial in there and, and use that as a connection point. Like that will happen sometimes. So it's not always like I'm just going to move through and tell you all my stuff and then you can ask your questions at the end. It's kind of like as we're moving through, sometimes things will raise uh, um Topics will come up, situations will happen, you'll strike a nerve, and then you can pause there to spend a little time on those important things because that's really uncovering their why, Mm -hmm. their need, and their want. And then that speaks to, again, the five real reasons. And, of course, as we're moving through those effectively, once we uncover those, you're not selling in the end. You're just helping them get what it is that they want. Um, So, yeah, it is more structured, but there is also uh, flexibility for dialogue and discussion on specific points to their life. And you all use a, um, a tool to kind of create that flexibility, but also have that structure throughout the presentation. It's a word that we use called tie-downs. Will you define what that is and then how you use that or how that works? It's a positive statement followed by an affirmative response question. We're taking their emotions and we're helping them get them out because a lot of times people have hard time putting them into words. We're putting mm-hmm. into words for them and we're basically saying, now that's what you meant to say, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, of mm-hmm. course. And then why is that important to you to make sure they're taken care of? And then they say, well, because I, I would never want my, my wife or my daughter to have to go through this if, if something was to happen to me. So in the sales process, this, the psychology behind that is to make sure people are coming with you, right? The you want to it, it's an engagement level where the client is moving forward with you as you're moving through. Mm-hmm. Um, new people sometimes miss this. They think the goal of the presentation is to sell a policy at the end, to write an application, and so they're moving through the content because they feel like that is the purpose. That is not the purpose. The, the the core, the, the trust building phase, uncovering need, uncovering want, and then doing presentation is all designed to have people move with you through the process so that you are together getting this information, securing the information that they already want, that they've told you that they want. You are not selling at that point. You're actually helping. You're advising. You're helping them get the thing that they identified that they wanted. Um, so again, the selling is not the telling. The, the, you're asking good questions. You're then affirming those questions back to them, and they're aff- you, they're giving you positive confirmation. Yes, this is what I want. And Zach's statement, you know, to make a positive statement uh, followed by an affirmative response question is a very leading way to check the temperature to see if people are with you. If a guide is going down a trail and you're out on a hike in Alaska and you get off one of these excursions and there's 20 people on the hike, like about every 10 minutes or so, that guide will stop to make sure that everybody's still doing okay. Because there's some people way at the back, they were looking at the moss growing at the tree and they, you, know, you left them and they're mm-hmm. back there. Well, if that guy doesn't stop, he realizes that person is not with us. Right? They become so, a settler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next crew that comes through. Yeah. How long have you been here? Uh, two weeks since the last <laughs> since the last hike was out here. So, like that guide has to check: as is everyone okay? And and then this is what's going to happen next. And around this bend, you're going to see some things here. And then we're going to stop in ten minutes, and we're going to take a little break. And and so that everyone stays engaged, everyone is together. Those are the best guides. I mean, if you go to a gym, the best coaches are the same way. Uh, the, I mean, and if you go to a sports practice of any type, you know, team, they're going to actually make sure that you're with them through the process. It's no different for you being in the home. You have to take temperatures, and so we call them tie downs. Like the, this idea of a tie down is like if you're setting up a tent. Right, and it's a large tent, and you're out, and maybe in a field. Uh, you want to make sure the tent is staked down all the way around first before you start putting up the tent, because if a gust of wind comes, it's it's all going to come undone, right? Mm-hmm. But if you've got it staked down, or if you've got it tied down, like when that gust of wind comes, it's not going to all come undone. Mm-hmm. Likewise, in the presentation, if you get these tie downs or micro agreements, like we like to refer to them, when you get to the end, it doesn't all the way come undone. Like I hear new agents, they'll call in and agents even respond to this podcast or they'll ask me, like, what do you get? What do you say at the end when they say they want to think about it? I'm like, you shouldn't be getting that at the end. Mm. You didn't have it tied down. 
The reason mm. why you're getting that is because it wasn't tied down. You didn't get the micro agreements all the way through. What do you say when they want to check their budget and give me a business card? Like that's the wrong question because if you're getting that question at the end, you haven't done the pre work, mm-hmm. right? And so the micro agreements, you know, I'm assuming, uh, Mr. Smith, that the reason you filled out this request is because of your concern for your family, knowing that your brother didn't have this benefit in place, and now his family is having to pay this bill. I'm assuming you don't want that to happen for your family. Is that right? Yeah. And now he's confirming. So if I can find you something affordable then, I'm assuming that you'd want to at least apply for that to see if we can get you covered. Is that right? Yes. These are, these are tie-down statements. These are micro-agreements. So we're looking to be able to move forward. So you're testing the temperature and moving forward as you go. Now, we spent a little bit of time talking about these tie-downs and micro-agreements, but Valerie's asking about transitions and length of sits. Like, why, why are we talking about this? Why is this important? It's important because you know we don't want to just move through a presentation. It's not about a time. I need, to, I need to sit with as many clients as I can. Let me get this whole presentation done in 10 minutes because I would rather have a quality presentation rather than two speedy presentations where I'm not – I mean, because why are we there anyways? Why are we doing presentations if we're not – trying to meet the client's needs and find a solution that's going to protect their family. And so these tie downs, like Roger said, it allows us to check the temperature on each page. So the content that we covered, we're making sure the client fully understands they're engaged and they're with us. That allows us to maintain emotional control throughout the sit. So when we do come to the end and we are finding the need and we are turning that into a want and building urgency, and now addressing the money of it, we're going to be able to close more sales. So that directly relates to all of our transitions because the majority, if not all, the transitions we do that are verbal, because there are nonverbal transitions with your body language and moving into the home, and Chris can talk about that in the closing. But depending on the amount of core we built and now our transitions and moving page to page and making sure the client is with us using these tie downs, that's going to determine how long our presentation will take. If the client is with us and they're engaged and they understand and we're maintaining that m- emotional control throughout the presentation, then boom, um, we're going to get a sell no matter what. I'm never going to move through need and urgency and want if I don't have the trust. So Mm. it's a progression in these tie downs. Yes, it's okay, Roger. You can turn the page. Yes, you can move forward. Yes, we're ready to go to find the need. Mm -hmm. That that lets us know. Okay, let's let's go one more step. Yeah, like like that last statement I just used about, hey, Mr. Smith, I'm assuming that if I can find you something affordable, that you at least want to apply for that to see if we can get you covered, right? So I might get an objection there. What could be an objection? Uh, Well, we'll see how much it costs. Mm -hmm. That's something I'll think about. Yeah, so I can get a couple of objections. And even though I said, if we can find something affordable for you, I'm assuming you'd want to go ahead and at least apply to see if we can get you covered, right? It's a leading question, but I got the affordability objection, even though I said, if it's affordable. So now my my response can be, well, that's Mr. Smith. That's exactly why I said, if it's affordable for you, because you get to determine that. How much money you want to put in the plan for your wife is completely up to you. So provided we accomplish that, I'm assuming you do want to apply to see if we can get you covered, right? Yes. Now I'm coming back. So now I'm asking for... So initially it was, I'm not ready. I then reset, re-ask the question, reset the expectation, address his objection or potential objection, and then re-ask the question and I get confirmation, then I can move forward. That is literally a, um, a uh, Zig Ziglar focal point in his sales. People don't buy because they don't have enough information. So the objection was an information on price and affordability. And because Roger said, if we could find something that's affordable for you, I'm assuming that's something you want to apply for to make sure that your wife's taken care of if something happens to you. And the objection is, and I hear, I mean, this will happen on occasion. Um, well, it's definitely something we'll want to think about or we'll see how much it costs. So what is the deficiency? I mean, what is the lack of information? The lack of information is um, affordability, right? That's why they're posting that objection or, or communicating that. Or, and, or if they're saying, well, think about it, you've not built the value. Right, yeah. So so um, that, that goes back to that Zig Ziglar line. If you can always have that running in the back of your mind, then 
It's not about time and the stopwatch that we keep going back to. Because if you're like, tick, 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 you know, hitting the this stopwatch, week in 60 minutes. Man, I got through a presentation in 30 minutes, you know, like, okay, well, how many apps did you get? Right. So, um, if that becomes the focal point, then you're then you're missing the checkpoints. So that's what we're really talking about through here. That there are checkpoints throughout the process. The checkpoints of building the the trust. I know we hit that a lot, but it's very important uh, to helping a client feel educated, to them taking ownership of the need, to them seeing the importance of taking action. Like those are your those are like you you hit that checkpoint. Now you can move forward. That's really what the timing is based off of. Yeah, the transitions serve as just these temperature checks right. throughout the sit. Yeah, that's the and that's a great thing. You know, I remember you guys. I don't know if you remember this, but I would turn the page, uh, Austin, and I practiced. I mean, I practiced with my wife. We we had tons of laughs. You know, I'm like, you're a 76 year old man with <laughs> with uh, COPD, and you know, you haven't seen. She you. looks way better than that. Oh yes, I know she's gorgeous and. Uh, but you know, she would, she would, she would take it so seriously. Like I would, I felt like I needed to give her an Oscar, like her acting was <laughs> phenomenal. And then I'd start laughing and she'd yell at me, but, um, we'd go through these practices, but then man, when I got into the field and I flipped the page, the very first page, I got to the end and I had no idea what to say to turn the page. Like, okay, like we did this, you know, we talked about this and then it's almost like you heard, <laughs> breaks, breaks are coming to yeah yeah breaks are screeching to a halt so it wasn't until you it's know, like you had a wooden presentation <laughs> 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 need some wd-40 on the rusty hinges but um it it became important to understand the value of doing the tie downs because those became my page turners for me mm. you know um so if you're if you're not working with the presentation then i don't know what you're doing mm-hmm. i think it's tough i mean i i wouldn't want to do it Tom Hopkins, back in the 90s, um, real estate guy. Um, I think I've referenced him before on this podcast. Um, there's, I think one of his books is called Act Like a Lamb, Sell Like a Lion. Oh, that's, that's beautiful, yeah, dude. Yeah, low-profile selling is what his, you know, what his philosophy was. And that's really the idea of the micro-agreement, you know, the, the getting the little yeses that lead to the big yes. Because if you get enough little yeses... Little yes, plus little yes, plus little yes, plus little yes, all the way through. At the end, if you add up all those little yeses, what does it equal? A big yes. A big yes at the end. And you don't have to go through the awkward, I want to think about it, right? Because you've got enough little yeses all the way through. So the transition from one, to the ne- from one part to the next part is incumbent on getting the micro agreement you know, as you transition. It's, uh, it's paramount. It's paramount. Like... There are agents that are listening to this podcast right now that you're getting 20 to 25 leads a week in final expense and you're rifling through them so you can try to be home by Wednesday, right? Monday to Wednesday, that's kind of your, that's kind of your shtick. And we have a lot of agents that work with us that are on that plan and they do extremely well. But there's some new agents that will come into that model and their goal is just to try to get through them because it's about them and it's about selling an app. And when... We first got into the business, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that we did was take care of the real need of the client because this idea of being a difference maker meant something to me. I wanted to elevate the value of life insurance sales in our industry across the board. It wasn't just about having success for Roger Short. It was about elevating the game. It was about raising the bar and teaching agents how to make a career and a lifetime out of this, where they're making a great income for them and their families, but they're doing it by really helping the families that they serve, building referral base, building lifetime clients. Like these are all things that are important to us. And if you take the time to walk through these th- this process with your clients, you'll become their advisor. You become their consultant. You're not the life insurance guy that they don't remember the name of the next day after you've left. So it's about a process of uncovering need, getting confirmation, getting affirmation, moving through, becoming their advisor, and then helping them get what they want, not selling them something that you, so you can say, I posted an app today. There's a difference. And the, the, the former that I just described to you of, of just rifling through your leads to try to get through the end of your leads so you can get home is about you and it's about the app and it's about getting a sale in that home. If you take the focus off that and put it on the client, You'll see the presentation. You'll see the sit entirely 
different than you have. You'll see the presentation as a consultative process to find out their real need and then help them get what they want. And the micro agreements are a part of that all the way through. So when you say all the way through, you you go through the presentation, but I mean it's the the stopwatch doesn't end at the end of the presentation. There's still some tie downs at the end. Um, will you kind of talk about the dessert uh, of the of the sit? <laughs> yeah. So um, you know the dessert of the sit it depends if you're talking about after the application and qualification is done. Yeah, let me talk about that just for a moment, okay? Because I do think there's there's body language pieces of this that move things forward. And and this is such a minor thing, okay? So you have your agreement, but but it's a big deal, okay? But you have your agreements. Yes, um, if I could, you could find something that's affordable, that's something you at least want to apply for to make sure you and your family are taken care of, right? Right, okay, great. So we're going to see what this looks like. We do the underwriting process. I'm going really fast on this. And once you have an idea... This is and this is where again I think new agents make mistakes. They're not sure what to do next. And here here's a simple transition: fill out an application. That's it. Just start filling out the application. You're not asking. No. You're, you're yeah. Yeah. Actually doing it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that is a physical. That is a physical transition. And well, I think we'll we'll address this in another podcast. But uh, it's interesting how credibility builds up. Credibility and um, and trust go hand in hand. And credibility builds up when you when you act like you know what you're doing. And if you're looking at the client like, okay, what do I do next? You know, do you mind if I, you know, you're making eye contact, trying to see who blinks first. Um, you know, waiting for them to say yes to an application. You just start filling it out. That's it. And then. Um, then you then you've sold it basically, you know, uh, and then you give them their options to to uh, of which plan works best for them. We'll talk about that on a different podcast. But then once you've once you filled out the application, you know they've qualified. That's when we can talk about dessert. That's the dessert of the the process. So you assume the sale, and then you get dessert. Yes, there we go. Yep, you're never asking for permission. You're always moving forward. Once you get the the little yeses all the way through. When you're at the end, you're just continuing to move forward. You're not waiting for permission at that point. You're then solving their problem, meeting their need, bringing the solution. And this is the solution. This is what we're going to do, okay, Mr. Smith, to take care of this for you and your family. And it will be affordable. All right, so let's determine uh, how we can get you qualified. I need to review some health questions with you now so that we can find which carrier and which product is going to be the very best for you and your, your wife, you and your family, here in the state of Illinois, you know, Indiana, Kentucky, Mississippi, wherever you are, um, so that we can we can best meet this need for you guys, okay? Yeah, and let them know like you represent, you know, if you have multiple carriers in your bag, which you should. There's yeah. so many different niches for clients um, that you have multiple carriers, and that's why you can get them the best. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. Mm-hmm. So as far as dessert goes. The dessert is going to be the cool down process. That's going to be not writing the app and jumping and running out of the door. <laughs> okay. Um, on to my next See ya, appointment. See your bank account. See ya. Right. Hey, Mr. It's, Smith, those are lovely uh, birds you have there. <laughs> and you're gone. Exactly. So you want to Boom. you want to bring the client back down, right? Because if you think about the entire set, they got a wall up. They're skeptical. You're bringing that wall down, and then you're building the value in the relationship, and then you're able to close the sale, and then you can't just leave them on that high. We have to bring them back down to normal. So if not, you're going to get some buyer's remorse. You're going to say, "What just happened? Just he did he just bamboozle me? Uh, I, you know, I don't know where he is. Bamboozled. You know, it's and people are going to feel a little uncomfortable. So if you're able to take that extra time after it's done. Put all your stuff away, kick back, lean on the couch, ask about what their upcoming weekend's plans, like any family reunions coming up. Talk about the things you did in core. Talk about anything and everything other than insurance. Make yourself a human again. Redevelop that trust in that short period of time before you're able to um, to move on. You have to have that relationship. That's, that's what's going to make this last. That's the dessert. That's going to satisfy the entire meal. Um, because sometimes 
you eat that meal and you leave, guess what you do on the way home? You stop and get some ice cream from somewhere else. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that that is very important. And, and, and I know the question is still in everybody's mind. Well, how long does all this stuff take? Because all you all said, it was his variables, this and that, and all of this. I can tell you what, what it normally is for me. And the biggest factor is if it's one client or if it's two. For the, for the time it takes to do the underwriting and applications for one verse and verse two, it kind of changes. But I would say on average, it's about an hour and a half to two hours for me. Um, sometimes it's less, sometimes it's a lot more. If we're reviewing a lot of companies and making phone calls and we're uh, organizing all of their paperwork for their family to make it really simple, and it's, it's a couple or kids and multiple policies, it's going to be a little longer. But I would say the majority of them are between an hour and a half to two hours for the entire process from knocking on the door to leaving out of the door. Chris, Roger, how about you? I would agree. And I, you know, when I was in friend zone, um, there were times I'd just get caught up and in, in hanging out with people because I liked the I liked the sit where I got in the door and felt comfortable. You know, mm-hmm. you like the human connection. Yes, I love the human connection, and I get caught up in stories sometimes. Man, like people are fascinating. I mean, some crazy stuff and cool stuff too. You know, and uh, th- that's that's the best part of this job to me. Um, but uh, I, you know, I think there are people like you know, who had that type of personality. Um, and then there, you know, there are people who, who, uh, need to lean in a little bit mm-hmm. with, you know, who, who are, yeah, some people have to be intentional about yes. that human connection. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but still time wise, it is about the same, about an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, I've had to hone that in. It, I mean, ultimately, uh, I have done presentations and written applications in 30 minutes. I've also been in homes for four hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there's, it varies. The 30 minute one was a sit right here in Louisville. And I literally showed up and he said, I've got called into work. I have 45 minutes, which means you have 30 minutes. Can we get this done in 30 or do we need to reschedule? What do you think I said? We can get it done in 30. (laughs) (laughs) Because I was committed because the likelihood of me getting a rebook at that point was, was going down. So let's take the opportunity while I'm here. And, um, I got them qualified and we got it done. And mm-hmm. uh, I finished up the rest of the, the the sales process after. I used a product that I didn't have to do a phone interview for, that sort of thing. So I had to kind of cater it to, to that. And I've been in those homes where it's four hours because as you're there and it starts to uncover, uh, you start to uncover things and, it, and the process starts to develop, you realize there's so much more need than they even realized when yeah. you first showed up. They have multiple policies. Some of them are, have terminated and they're not even aware of it. Others are... Um, are um, a universal life, these flexible, adjustable policies that are going to implode because there's not enough cash value building in them and it's going to run out in about three more years and they're not aware of that. And some of them are term policies that are going up every five years or some of them might have a term policy that's going to terminate when they're 80 years old and they're 76. Mm-hmm. Like There's all these variables and once you start to get in and uncover the the real need in the house it's much bigger than you anticipated and it takes some time to work through navigating that, finding out what they really have and then uh, realizing the husband also has a need and then the adult daughter who might live with them or lives down the street or next door is kind of their primary caretaker person that you know she wants cover. I mean, it, it really starts to uncover. If you, if you invest your time well, like you can service and help all of those people and really bless that family. So time, 30 minutes, four hours, whatever it takes to get the job done, but do the best you can with what you have, uh, understanding that there's five real reasons. And if you move through that process, you will get there at the other side of that. And, um, and you'll, uh, you'll get to a place where you're developing a relationship for years, not just a client for this moment, not just a customer that you put on the board as a, hey, I wrote six policies this week for this much, and next week you've forgotten the names of them. Right, right. We, that's not what we want long term. Long term, if you're going to be in this business, build a client base. If you take care of your clients, your clients will take care of you. Mm-hmm. And you know, last episode we talked about tracking your numbers. Is tracking your time important? I would look at the other numbers. You know, but if you start noticing on your activity tracker. That you left the, you know, you left, entered the market at 8.30 in the morning. You left the market at 
seven thirty, eight, depending on what time of the day, and you only had three sits. Yeah, and they were, and it filled your day, and it filled your day. Yeah, then you might want to look, and at you them. didn't get the app. Right. Well, maybe they're going mm-hmm. a little long. Right. Or, another another factor is you know, and and I've seen this too, where they've gotten seven or eight sits in a day, and I'm like, holy cow, man, you must be auctioneering. You know, <laughs> like do I hear? Do I do? You know, whatever. I can't do. But it. they've actually had seven or eight presentations. Yes, and it was sits. correct, and it wasn't yeah. a sit. So, um, you know, I think on these show notes, specifically this episode, are going to be important because these are the checkpoints and the things to look for in the checkpoints as far as uh, temperature checks. You know, are people engaged? Are they with you? Is it conversational? Are your transitions conversational? And are you in control? So, hop on the website. Print these out, keep them with you out in the field, and just review it after a sit when you're having when you're having lunch. Just pull out the sheet and check yourself before you wreck yourself, as the kids say. Well, Valerie, we hope we answered your question, and we'd love to hear your thoughts on our response, as well as any of our listeners' thoughts on this episode. Have you implemented anything we've discussed? What's been the results? Well, send us an email, message us on social media, or visit the feedback page of our website. Speaking of which, like Chris said, make sure to visit this episode's show notes page. We've added links to several of the resources we discussed today, including a downloadable temperature check that you can use between your sits to make sure that you're giving your leads the most opportunity that you can. Visit liapodcast.org slash EP22 or click the link in the show notes description wherever you're listening. Again, that's liapodcast.org slash EP22. Also, you can reach out to us directly uh, by texting LIA in your message to 82149, or just give us a call at 502-805-1713. We'd love to connect with you, especially if you don't have a presentation for your sales process, like Chris and Roger mentioned. Again, all of this contact information is on our website, liapodcast.org slash EP22. As always, thanks so much for listening to the Life Insurance Academy podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening, rate us five stars, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad. The Life Insurance Academy podcast is hosted, edited, and mixed by me, Austin Lopes Lovero. This episode was produced by Chris Ball and myself. Our theme song is by Flashing Lights. We'll catch you on another episode. Until then, stay safe and go be a difference maker.